The Shepherd of Hermas Greek, poimen tu herma, poimen tou herma, sometimes just called the Shepherd is a Christian literary work of the late 1st or mid-2nd century, considered a valuable book by many Christians, and considered canonical scripture by some of the early church fathers such as Irenaeus. The Shepherd was very popular amongst Christians in the 2nd and 3rd centuries. It is part of the Codex Sinaiticus, and it is listed between the Acts of the Apostles and the Acts of Paul in the stichometrical list of the Codex Claremontanus. The work comprises five visions, twelve mandates, and ten parables. It relies on allegory and pays special attention to the Church, calling the faithful to repent of the sins that have harmed it. The book was originally written in Rome, in the Greek language, but a first Latin translation, the Vulgata, was made very shortly afterwards. A second Latin translation, the Palatina, was made at the beginning of the 5th century. Of the Greek version, the last fifth or so is missing. The shepherd is one of the meanings that is probably attached to some figurines of the Good Shepherd as well as an epithet of Christ, or a traditional pagan Creophoros. Contents <inaudible> 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 The book consists of five visions granted to Hermas, a former slave. This is followed by twelve mandates or commandments, and ten similitudes, or parables. It commences abruptly in the first person. He who brought me up sold me to a certain Rhoda, who was at Rome. After many years I met her again, and began to love her as a sister. As Hermas is on the road to Cumi, he has a vision of Rhoda. She tells him that she is his accuser in heaven, on account of an unchaste thought the married narrator had once had concerning her, though only in passing. He is to pray for forgiveness for himself and all his house. He is consoled by a vision of the church in the form of an aged woman, weak and helpless from the sins of the faithful, who tells him to do penance and to correct the sins of his children. Subsequently, he sees her made younger through penance, yet wrinkled and with white hair, then again, as quite young but still with white hair, and lastly, she shows herself as glorious as a bride. This allegorical language continues through the other parts of the work. In the second vision she gives Hermas a book, which she afterwards takes back in order to add to it. The fifth vision, which is represented as taking place twenty days after the fourth, introduces the Angel of Repentance in the guise of a shepherd, from whom the whole work takes its name. He delivers to Hermas a series of precepts mandata, entelai, which form an interesting development of early Christian ethics. One point which deserves special mention is the depiction of a husband's obligation to take back an adulterous wife on her repentance. The eleventh mandate, on humility, is concerned with false prophets who desire to occupy the first seats that is to say, among the presbyters. Some have seen here a reference to Marcion, who came to Rome c. 140 and desired to be admitted among the priests or possibly even to become bishop of Rome. After the mandates come ten similitudes parabolae in the form of visions, which are explained by the angel. The longest of these similitude nine is an elaboration of the parable of the building of a tower, which had formed the matter of the third vision. The tower is the church, and the stones of which it is built are the faithful. But in the third vision it looked as though only the holy are a part of the church. In Similitude 9 it is clearly pointed out that all the baptized are included, though they may be cast out for grave sins, and can be readmitted only after penance. In spite of the grave subjects, the book is written in a very optimistic and hopeful tone, like most early Christian works. Topic. Christology Topic. In Parable 5, the author mentions a son of God, as a virtuous man filled with a holy, pre-existent spirit, and adopted as the son. In the second century, adoptionism the view that Jesus Christ was at least initially, only a mortal man was one of two competing doctrines about Jesus' true nature, the other being that he pre-existed as the word logos or only begotten son of God and is to be identified as such from his conception, Christ. S identity is the Logos JN1 in which the Logos is further understood to be uncreated and coessentially divine with God that is, the Father, was affirmed in 325 at the First Council of Nicaea. Bogdan G. Bucher says the document was widely accepted among Orthodox Christians, yet was not criticized for apparently exhibiting an adoptionistic Christology. He says that the passage in question should be understood as Jesus making his dwelling within those who submit to his spirit, so that the adoption that takes place is not of Jesus, but of his followers. 
Topic: <laughs> Authorship and date. Topic: Textual criticism, the nature of the theology, and the author's apparent familiarity with the Book of Revelation and other Johannine texts are thought to set the date of composition in the second century. However, several ancient witnesses support an early dating and there is internal evidence for the place and date of this work in the language and theology of the work. The reference to an unknown Clement is presumed by some to be Clement of Rome, if this is that Clement, it would suggest a date c. 90 for at least the historicized setting of the first two visions. Since Paul sent greetings to a Hermas, a Christian of Rome Romans chapter 16 verse 14, a minority have followed Origen of Alexandria's opinion that he was the author of this religious allegory. Three ancient witnesses, one of whom claims to be contemporary, declare that Hermas was the brother of Pope Pius I, whose pontificate was not earlier than 140–155 AD, which corresponds to the date range offered by J. B. Lightfoot, Lightfoot 1891. These authorities may be citing the same source, perhaps Hegesippus, whose lost history of the early church provided material for Eusebius of Caesarea. The witnesses are the following The Muratorian fragment is a list written c. 170 AD although some scholars now question this date and prefer to assign the fragment to the 4th century, that may be the earliest known canon of New Testament writings. It identifies Hermas, the author of The Shepherd, as the brother of Pius I, Bishop of Rome, but Hermas wrote The Shepherd very recently, in our times, in the city of Rome, while Bishop Pius, his brother, was occupying the chair of the Church of the City of Rome. And therefore it ought indeed to be read, but it cannot be read publicly to the people in church either among the prophets, whose number is complete, or among the apostles, for it is after their time. The Liberian Catalogue of Popes, a record that was later used in the writing of the Liber Pontificalis, states in a portion under the heading of 235. Under his pious episcopate, his brother Erms wrote a book in which are contained the precepts which the angel delivered to him, coming to him in the guise of a shepherd. A poem written against Marcion from the 3rd or 4th century, by a writer adopting the name and persona of Tertullian, and sometimes therefore referred to as Pseudo-Tertullian, states then, after him, Pius, whose brother according to the flesh was Hermas, the angelic shepherd, because he spoke the words given to him. Note that Pseudo-Tertullian quotes some details from this list which are absent from the Liberian catalogue, which may mean that he is independent of it. Topic. Place in Christian literature Topic. Remarks of Tertullian and Clement of Alexandria give a sense of resistance to the shepherd among its hearers, and of a sense of controversy about it. Tertullian implies that Pope Calixtus I had quoted it as an authority though evidently not as one of the books of the Bible, for he replies. I would admit your argument, if the writing of the shepherd had deserved to be included in the divine instrument, and if it were not judged by every council of the churches, even of your own churches, among the apocryphal and false." And again, he says that the epistle of Barnabas is "...more received among the churches than that apocryphal shepherd." De Pudicitia, 10 and 20. Though Clement of Alexandria constantly quotes with reverence a work that seems to him to be very useful, and inspired, yet he repeatedly apologizes, when he has occasion to quote it, on the ground that, "...many people despise it." Two controversies divided the mid-century Roman Christian communities. One was Montanism, the ecstatic inspired outpourings of continuing Pentecostal revelations, such as the visions recorded in The Shepherd may have appeared to encourage. The other was Docetism that taught that the Christ had existed since the beginning and the corporeal reality of Jesus the man was simply an apparition. Cyprian makes no reference to this work, so it would seem to have gone out of use in Africa during the early decades of the 3rd century. Somewhat later it is quoted by the author of the pseudo-Cyprianic tract Adversus Aleators as Scriptura Divina, but in Jerome's day it was almost unknown to the Latins. Curiously, it went out of fashion in the East, so that the Greek manuscripts of it are but two in number, whereas in the West it became better known and was frequently copied in the Middle Ages. See also Confession in the first two centuries Hermes of Philippopolis Papyrus 129 Shoulder Angel Topic. References 
Topic. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Herbermann, Charles, ed., 1913. Hermas. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton. Topic. Publications Topic. The Greek text is edited by Gebhardt and Harnack, Leipzig, 1877, by Funk, Tübingen, 1901, and with its English translation by Lightfoot, Apostolic Fathers, edited by Harman, London, 1893. The Codex Sinaiticus of Hermas was edited by Lake, Oxford, 1911. The English translation by William Wake, Archbishop of Canterbury, 1716 to 1737, is given in W. Hone and J. Jones's Apocryphal New Testament, London, 1820. An English translation is also in Volume I of the American edition of Anti-Nicene Fathers, edited by Roberts and Donaldson, Buffalo, 1886. In general, consult Crutwell, Literary History of Early Christianity, Volume E, London, 1893. Kruger, History of Early Christian Literature, New York, 1897. Harnack, Chronologie der Altchristlichen Literature, Volume I, Leipzig, 1897. Taylor, The Shepherd of Hermas, New York, 1901. Topic further reading topic Carolyn Osiak, Wealth and Poverty in the Shepherd of Hermas, Studia Patristica, Vol. 17, pt. 2, 1982, 725-730. Carolyn Osiak, The Genre and Function of the Shepherd of Hermas, Samea, 36, 1986, 113-121. U. Niemeyer, Die Chrysalische Lehrer im Zweiten Jahrhundert. IHRE Lehrtechigkeit, IHR Selbstverständnis und IHRE Geschichte Leiden, 1989 Vigilier Christiani. Supplements, 4, 9-15. Carolyn Osiak, The Second Century Through the Eyes of Hermas, Continuity and Change, Biblical Theology Bulletin, 20, 1990, 116-122. D. P. O'Brien, The Cumian Sibyl as the Revelation Bearer in the Shepherd of Hermas, Journal of Early Christian Studies, 5, 1997, 4. Carolyn Osiak, The Shepherd of Hermas in Context, Acta Patristica et Byzantina, 8, 1997, 115 134. Carolyn Osiak, The Oral World of Early Christianity in Rome, The Case of Hermas, in Carl P. Donfried and Peter Richardson, eds. Judaism and Christianity in First Century Rome, Grand Rapids, 1998, 151-172. Carolyn Osiak, Shepherd of Hermas, A Commentary, Minneapolis, 1999. Jorg Rupka, Apokalyptische Salzburg, Zum Sozialen Ort und zur Literarischen Strategie des Hurten des Hermes, Archive für Religionsgeschichte, 1, 1999, 148-160. Jorg Rupka, Der Hurt des Hermes, Plausibilisierungs- und Legitimierungsstrategien im Übergang von Antique und Christentum, Zeitschrift für Antikes Christentum, 7, 2003, 362-384. Marco Frenschkowski, Vision ALS Imagination. Biobachtungen zum differenzierten Werklichkeitsansprüche Fruha Kreislicher Visions Literature, in Nicola Hemke, Manuel Bombach, HRSG, Fremd Werklichkeiten, Literarische Fantastik und Antique Literature, Heidelberg, 2006, Studien zur Griechischen und Lateinischen Posi, 6, 339-366. Joseph Verhaden, The Shepherd of Hermas, in Paul Foster, ed., Writings of the Apostolic Fathers, London, 2007, T&T Clark Biblical Studies. Christian Tornau, Paolo Cecconi, eds., The Shepherd of Hermas in Latin. Critical edition of the oldest translation Vulgata, Walter de Gruyter, Berlin, Boston 2014. Topic external links Topic Greek text of the Shepherd of Hermas Archbishop Wake's English translation of the Shepherd of Hermas The Shepherd of Hermas English translation Early Christian Writings Shepherd of Hermas Critical Translation Plus Audio Dramatization Biblical Audio J.B. Lightfoot, Introduction to the Shepherd of Hermas at the Wayback Machine Archived April 1, 2008 Herbermann, Charles, ed. 1913. Hermas. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton Company. Hermas Shepherd on earlychurch.org.uk Bibliography and links to online articles. Fragments of Hermas in Amherst Papyri.